In this video, we are going to talk about the periodic table and the elements. Recall that elements are unique and are made up of one type of atom. Right now, there are 118 known elements. 92 of them are naturally occurring. Elements can have different numbers of protons and electrons, which explains all of the differences in the physical properties of matter. Some elements exist at room temperature as gas, some are liquid, and some are solid. And all elements are listed and organized in a chart called the periodic table. This was invented by the Russian scientist Dmitry Mendeleev in 1869. The periodic table is arranged in a grid format. Each element sits in a specific place in the grid according to its atomic number. The atomic number is the number of protons in an element that defines its position in the periodic table. You have to take note that in a neutral atom, the number of protons is equal to the number of electrons. If you look closely, you will see this. So this 11 is called the atomic number. This is the chemical symbol, this is the element name, and the average atomic mass, 22.98977. In some references, you will see this pattern, which is called the electron configuration. Electron configurations describe where electrons are located around the nucleus of an atom. Now let's go back to the periodic table. It is also organized by rows and columns. A horizontal row is called a period, a vertical column is called a group or a family. Now, groups have similar physical and chemical properties. The group number can be written in a couple of different ways. First is from 1 to 18. This is the IUPAC recommended numbering system. This is more unambiguous but less useful. Next is by naming the tall columns from 1 to 8. And you have to take note that the structure of the table is based on the mass. The elements are arranged from left to right by increasing atomic number. What does it mean? It means that as you go from left to right, each element has one more electron and one more proton than the element to the left of it. For example, hydrogen. Hydrogen has one electron, helium has two electrons, lithium has three electrons, and so on. Elements in the same column have similar physical and chemical properties. With that, you have to remember that the periodic table is governed by the periodic law, which states that physical and chemical properties of the elements recur in a systematic and predictable way when the elements are arranged in order of increasing atomic number. The periodic law is considered to be one of the most important concepts in chemistry. It helps chemists to predict how an element will behave. Now, the elements in the periodic table are split up into three categories. We have the metal, metalloid, and the non-metal. I changed the image for you to easily visualize it. In many cases, the letters in a chemical symbol correspond to the name of the element but not always. For example, oxygen, O. Zinc, Zn. But gold is aurum, Au. Aurum is the Latin word for gold and the source of its chemical symbol, Au. Now let's talk about the metals. Metals are solid at room temperature except for mercury, which is a liquid at room temperature. They are ductile, meaning they can be pulled into thin wires. They are lustrous or high luster or they are shiny. Next, they are malleable. They can be hammered into thin sheets. They are also good conductors of electricity and heat. And metals are prone to lose electrons easily. For example, we have lithium batteries. Now these are your non-metals. Mostly they are in the right except for hydrogen okay non-metals have properties that are opposite from those in metals they are dull brittle poor conductors of heat and electricity they can be solid liquid or gaseous at room temperature and they have the ability to gain or share electrons easily some examples are nitrogen sulfur bromine and selenium now of course we have the metalloid 
the last category. Metalloids have properties that are a mix of metal and non-metal properties. They are solid at room temperature, they can be dull or shiny, and they are a mix of good conductors and poor conductors of electricity and heat. Metalloids are also characterized by having physical properties that tend to be metallic and chemical properties that tend to be non-metallic. Again, a family in the periodic table is a set of elements that share the same properties. The characteristics of each element display is determined by the number of valence electrons. Valence electrons decide on how the atom will react in a chemical reaction. They are the electrons in the outermost shell of an atom. Now you have to remember that every element wants to have a full octet, which is typically, but not always, 8 electrons in the outer shell. To get the full octet, an element will either gain or lose valence electrons. This satisfies the octet rule. The octet rule states that the elements must combine in such a way that each atom has 8 electrons in its valence shell so that it has the same electronic configuration as a noble gas. Now there are 5 major groups in the periodic table. Now let's talk about them one by one. First, we have the alkali metals or the group 1A. Elements in this group have the following properties. They have one valence electron that they will give up easily to get an octet. With that, the ion form of these elements has a positive one charge. They are soft metallic solids that are also shiny because again, they are metals. They are also good heat and electrical conductors and have low densities and relatively low melting points, which decreases with atomic mass. Next, we have the alkaline earth metals or the group 2A. They contain two valence electrons that they will give up. So the ion form has two positive charge. For example, we have the calcium ion. So the charge of the calcium ion is two positive. They are metallic solids which are harder than alkali metals and they are denser have higher melting point and are better conductors than alkali metals. Next, we have the transition metals from group 3 to 12. The number of electrons that these elements can lose varies. It means that multiple charges are possible. They are hard metallic solids which are very good conductors and have high melting points. They are also shiny, dense, and lustrous. Next, we have the halogens. Halogens have 7 valence electrons. Because of that, they have the highest desire to gain an electron to achieve the full octet. With that, halogens are very reactive nonmetals. They also have high melting points and boiling points that increase as the atomic number increases. Next, we have the noble gases. The noble gases have 8 valence electrons except for helium which has two valence electrons. Noble gases rarely react with other substances because they have a complete outer energy level. They achieved the full octet. Now, how about those two rows of elements that are below the main periodic table? So remember that these elements actually fit into the table right after group 2A. They are often shown below the main table because the table would be too long to fit on the page. These elements are known as the lanthanides and actinides. Lanthanides are also called rare earth metals, which comprise elements 57 to 71. They have properties that are similar to lanthanide, which occurs at the beginning of the row and has an atomic number 57. So that's why they are called lanthanides. Actinides are elements from 89 to 103. These are mostly man-made elements that don't exist in nature. Two exceptions are the uranium and the plutonium. 